here, here we go. So, so the web page on taking charge of your health and well-being of the University of Minnesota defines spirituality. Spirituality is a broad concept with room for many perspectives. In general, it includes a sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves, and it typically involves a search for meaning in life. As such, it is a universal human experience, something that touches us all. People may describe a spiritual experience as sacred or transcendent, or simply a deep sense of aliveness and interconnectedness. In my short lecture today, I would like to examine the genealogies of the term spirituality, its emergence as a key concept in contemporary Western cultures, and the relation between the emergence of spirituality as a new culture category and the modern and postmodern constructions and transformations of the religious and the secular. Many scholars have noted the prevalence of spirituality in contemporary culture. Some scholars consider spirituality as a component or type of religion. Others denied the religiosity of contemporary spirituality and regard it as a disguised form of secular consumerism. Differently from these approaches, I will suggest that contemporary spirituality is a new culture category that defies the modern dichotomy between the religious and the secular. I will argue that spirituality and the new age culture practices related to it challenge the division created in the modern era between the religious and re secular realms of life and enables the formation of new lifestyles, social practices, and cultural artifacts that cannot be defined as either religious or secular. Before I, dis I, I start to discuss the genealogies of spirituality and to present my thoughts about spirituality as a new postmodern culture category, I would like to clarify the assumptions that underlie my discussion. I would like to clarify that I do not consider the religious and the secular as universal transhistorical phenomena that exist in all human cultures. Instead, I regard them as contingent, historical dependent concepts that were shaped in European Christian culture in the modern period. The notion that the religious and the secular are universal phenomena that exist in every human society is prevalent and many things taken for granted, both in everyday speech as well as in academic studies. According to this perception, the core of religion is the belief in and worship of divine or transcendent beings. Religion is essentially a subjective and private realm of human life that should be distinct and separate from other public and objective realms of human society which are defined as secular. These assumptions about the religious and the secular were and still are widely accepted by the public and by many scholars. I do not accept these assumptions. Following Talal Assad and others, I do not think there can be a universal definition of religion. As many scholars have shown, non-Christian 
and pre-modern cultures did not have any words that were equivalent or even similar to the terms religion and secular. The division of the social and cultural spheres into secular and religious realms is not universal, and most human cultures did not have concepts equivalent to these modern terms. Following Talal Assad, Russell McCutcheon, Tomoko Masusawa, Brent Nongabri, and many others, I regard the religious and the secular not as universal human phenomena, but as modern Western categories that were shaped in the context of the Reformation, Western colonialism, the development of nation states, and the emergence of capitalist economic system. The modern concepts of religion and the secular that emerge in the early modern and modern periods were used and still are used to define, construct, and regulate a variety of modern social practice, practices and institutes. These notions were also used to classify, describe, interpret, and control a large variety of human social and cultural formations in non-Western and pre-modern societies. Similar to the religion and the secular, I do not, re not regard spirituality as a universal domain that exists in every culture. Instead, I suggest to understand it as a recently constituted cultural category. The contemporary concept of spirituality is a new discursive construct establishing current ways of classification and different modes of understanding the world and acting within it. This new category shapes a variety of innovative practices and cultural productions in which the newly constituted notion of spirituality plays a central and defining role. As I will suggest, the emergence of spirituality as a key term in contemporary society indicates that the modern dichotomy between the religious and the secular is becoming less compelling in today's globalized cultures. Finally, I would like to clarify that my observations are based mostly on the use of the term spirituality in English-speaking countries, as well as on the use of the equivalent term in Hebrew, ruchaniyut, in contemporary Israel. I believe that similar terms are used in similar ways also in other cultures, such as perhaps the Chovnos in Russia. Yet I also assume that there are, also, there are interesting differences in the formations of contemporary spirituality in different cultures. I would like to turn now to a short discussion of the history of the term spirituality. The origin of the term spirituality in English and related terms in other modern European language is the Latin noun spiritus, from the verb spirare, to breathe. In early Christian text, the word spiritus was used to translate the biblical Hebrew ruach and the Greek pneuma. In the Old Testament, the term, the term ruach, movement of air, wind, denotes a divine element and the human life principle received from and returned to God. Similar meanings are attached to the word pneuma in the New Testament, where it is frequently juxtaposed to sars, flesh. The opposition between the spirit and the flesh was emphasized by Paul, who wrote in the epistle to the Galatians, that I say then, 
walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. In medieval Christian theology, the Pauline opposition between the spirit and the flesh was expanded to a dichotomy between spirituality and materiality. It also denoted proper Christian conduct and matters related to ecclesiastical jurisdiction. In the modern period, as the modern perception of religion as a universal phenomenon became established, spirituality was understood as the essence, sorry, next one, yeah. Uh, in the modern opinion, as the modern perception of religion as a universal phenomenon became established, spirituality was understood as the essence of true religion. The first edition of the Webster Dictionary published in 1828, defines spirituality as essence distinct from matter, immateriality, intellectual nature, that, be, that which belongs to the church or to a person as an ecclesiastic, as well as the quality which respects the spirit or affections of the heart only and the essence of true religion. The perception of spirituality as the, as the individualistic and subjective core of universal religiosity became widespread in the late 19th and early 20th century. Although spirituality was still perceived as related to and sometimes identical with religion, the notion that spirituality can exist outside the realm of religion which, as we shall see, will become widespread in the late 20th century, appears already in this period. During the late 19th and early 20th century, spirituality was often associated with Oriental, especially Indian culture, which was recurrently portrayed as more religious and spiritual than the secular and materialistic West. In the second half of the 20th century, especially in the last decades of the century, the term spirituality underwent more discursive shifts. It became widely used and its semantic field expanded and changed. New practices, institutes, and cultural products mostly related to new age culture came into being and were, were molded under the impact of this emergent new culture category. Today, the, spirit, the term spiritual is applied to a large variety of practices, as you can see, which include meditations, martial arts, healing, alternative medicine, nutrition, channeling, etc., etc. Although it is hard to find an accepted definition of spirituality, some common elements recur in contemporary understandings and, and in its contemporary applications and application. As we have seen in the definition that I cited at the beginning of my talk, spirituality refers to a sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves, to a search for meaning in life, and to a deep sense of alive. Aliveness. Co comparing this early 21st century definition of spirituality to the earlier 19th century definition of the Webster Dictionary is striking. Neither immateriality, the church, religion, nor God are associated today with spirituality. The binary opposition between the spiritual and the corporeal and material has become blurred in the current definitions and usages of the term, and the term became detached 
from its connection in, from its connection to religion. Indeed, many people today emphasize the difference between spirituality and religion. The separation of spirituality from religion is especially pronounced in the popular phrase, spiritual but not religious. As scholars noted, millions of people today, especially in the United States and Europe, define their identity as such. In the introduction to a recent volume of studies, being spiritual but not religious, William Parson and Robert Fuller discuss the history and dissemination of this trait. Interestingly, they show that the phrase was first popular, popularized by Bill Wilson, also known as Bill W., the founder of Alcoholic Anonymous, who referred to his 12-step program as not religious, but spiritual. The phrase gained growing popularity since the 1970s, and according to recent polls, almost a quarter of Americans today consider themselves spiritual, but not religious. Notwithstanding the assertion of many practitioners of contemporary spirituality that they are spiritual but not religious, many scholars insist that contemporary spirituality is a form of religion. Thus, for instance, the sociologist Steve Ruth, in his 2013 Secularization in Defense of an Unfashionable Theory, heard already that it's not fashionable anymore, uh, claimed that far from arguing that alternative spirituality is not properly religious, I have suggested that it is a type of religion very well suited to modernity. While most scholars understand contemporary spirituality as a form of religion, a few scholars and cultural critiques of the new age regard it as a form of neoliberal capitalist secularism. For instance, Jeremy Corrette and Richard King selling spirituality, the silent takeover of religion, argue that spirituality is, has in fact become a powerful commodity in the global marketplace, a cultural addiction that reflects orthodox pol politics, curbs self-expression, and colonizes Eastern elites. Differently from these scholars, I would like to suggest to take seriously the pervasive assertion that spirituality is not religion and to avoid analyzing and interpreting contemporary spirituality as a new form of universal religiosity. I also think that we should not understand contemporary spirituality as a disguised form of neo-capitalist secularism. The assumption that contemporary spirituality must be either religious, a religious or a secular phenomenon rests on the still ingrained presupposition that the religion and the secular are universal transcultural phenomena. The recognition that both religion and the secular are modern categories and discursive formations can help us understand and analyze contemporary spirituality as a new culture formation that is indeed neither religious nor secular. I would like to conclude. As I mentioned before, the establishment of the terms religion and the secular as universal categories was dependent on various events and processes which shaped the modern era, including the Protestant Pro uh, Reformation, the discovery of the new world, European colonialism, and the rise of nation states and capitalism. The categorization 
into religion and the secular was instrumental in the formations of new political regimes, social institutes, and cultural productions both in Europe and America, as well as in non-Western countries who were under the control and influence of modern European culture. Yet, as we saw, during the late 20th century, the binary distinction between the religious and the secular weakened. Growing numbers of people refused to define their identity as either religious or secular, preferring instead the term spiritual. New cultural beliefs, practices, products, commonly referred to as new age, which defy categorization as either religious or secular, have been formed. There are various reasons for the decline of the religion and the secular as compelling culture categories, and for the emergence of spirituality as a key concept of contemporary culture. The economic, political, and social processes of late capitalism and their related postmodern culture formations challenged, undermined, and altered some of the central discursive practice and social institutes of modernity. The emergence of spirituality as a new cultural as a new cultural construct coincides with significant economic, social, and political processes which took place at that time and are inherently connected to them. As several scholars noted, there is a connection between New Age spirituality to globalization, late capitalism, postmodernity, and neoliberal ideologies. The free recycling combination and adaptation of ideas and practices from diverse cultures, which is characteristic of the new age, are part of the hybridization of globalized, late capitalistic contemporary culture. The practical perception of spirituality today as primarily a way of improving one's life, with its emphasis on practices such as meditation and healing, can be seen as part of the contemporary decline of belief in grand narratives and the practical and pragmatic perception of knowledge typifying the late modern or postmodern condition. Contemporary spirituality shares several ideological commonalities such as individualism, entrepreneurism, and freedom of choice with neoliberal ideologies. The new cultural category and new age culture, spiritual, sorry, the new cultural category spirituality and new age cultures are part of the emergence of, a new, dis, of new discursive practices and social institutes which are governed by the new cultural logic of postmodern, post-industrial, globalized culture. These new culture formations are part of a historical moment that developed out of modernity, but challenges some of its most entrenched categories and values. The emergence of contemporary spirituality corroborates the claim that religion and the secular are not permanently fixed categories and indicates that the modern dichotomy between the religious and the secular is becoming less relevant in contemporary culture. The erosion of the gripping culture power of these fundamental concepts of modernity in the late modern era enabled the development of a new cultural category that supersedes them, a category which is spiritual but not religious, but not secular. Thank you. Thank you for a very interesting uh, talk. And I think that's a very good beginning uh, of speaking about uh, you know, secular and religious and modern, postmodern. Any questions?
I want to ask, uh, don't you think that uh, the, uh, th this separation is not clear, that uh, the spiritual, that uh, the define, uh, the, uh, the phenomenon that people define, uh, describe themselves as spiritual is because the, uh, some kind of the persuasion uh, of the uh, term religion in modern era. And the, the, uh, this is just the same phenomenon, uh, but uh, with another world. What? And people try to describe themselves uh, as uh, spiritual because they just uh, don't want to uh, call them religious because of modernism and uh, secular propaganda and so on. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, yes. Uh, I, I'm not sure about secular propaganda. I smiled at it, uh, but it's a nice term. Um, yes, but they don't want to be, but they don't define themselves as secular again. So this is a kind of, there is, of course, the negative uh, uh, um, connotation into, uh, into the term religion. Uh, but I think this is part of the process. Um, uh, they need, I, I think it's more than need, they create we create, by the way, I don't want to put me outside as just an observant. I'm part of this culture and I actually practice, you know, I did yoga, I did some meditation, so I'm part, I think I'm part of this culture and I think it's suitable for me as a person who really, I'm not sure, I don't concentrate. I definitely uh, uh, will not, and many other people will not define myself as re of religion, but, but looking at, 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 at Accepting that if I'm not if I'm not religious, I'm immediately secular. With of course the notion of what secularism and what religion are, I think it's less applicable, useful, relevant to people who live today. And because of that, they find it very easily to define themselves and things they do and places they go to as as spiritual, which is again not religious, of course, with the negative uh, connotations, but also not secular, which also has its negative, uh, uh, negative uh, uh, connotation, probably and not only because of religious propaganda, but also sometimes because of you know, spiritual, secular propaganda. So, so I don't think that's, that, I think this is part of the story that I'm trying to tell, what, what, you, you, have to, what you observe, this negative approach to, to religiosity and, and dissatisfaction with, with identifying oneself as, as secular. Uh, hello. Uh, my question is rather close to the previous one. Uh, it's uh, how broad is this category, spiritual but not religious people? Uh, do they necessarily uh, belong to the new age, uh, I don't know, culture, subcultures, or are they just people who maybe call themselves Orthodox Christians, for example, by, but they don't attend uh, uh, ceremonies in churches and so on? So, uh, uh, if uh, the uh, answer is uh, like the latter, well, can we say that uh, spiritual but not religious people is the majority of the population on the earth right now? Is the, the last word I didn't, if uh, is the majority? Uh, can we say that uh, spiritual but not religious people is the majority of the population in the earth? On our plan. Thank you. Um, well, uh, first of all, the, the, the book that I, uh, you know, uh, uh, Parsons and Fuller book, you'll have uh, uh, much info information, more information about the polls and exactly analyzing them. As far as I remember, well, it's, it's still not the majority, but it's a large, re really large numbers, uh, about 40%, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who define themselves as spiritual but not religious in the United States. I think they come, it's not only, well, I don't think new, uh, uh, new Age is a subculture anymore. I think it's the dominant culture. Yeah, you don't call, because of that, you don't call it New Culture anymore, uh, new, new Age anymore. But I think if we look at the, at the characteristics of New Age culture, I think they're quite, uh, you know, they're, they're the norm today uh, and quite hege hegemonic. Uh, the term will be used also by people who attend churches, synagogue, etc. Actually, one of the passages what, that I brought was taken from, a, I think, a 
Catholic or Protestant uh, websites, and they use the same definition of spirituality. So I think it comes across, and again, from some observation uh, 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 that I made, some research plans, we, we have a lot of spiritual rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetorics and practices, at least in liberal churches and liberal synagogues. Quite interesting to, to uh, compare them, uh, to listen to, to sermons, practices, yoga classes given in synagogues and churches, which I think you are, are, are acquainted with, that it becomes a place where you have, I can tell you from my liberal synagogue, uh, we used to have meditation before, uh, before the, the, Saturday, uh, 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 the, sa the Saturday service, and, and the rabbi, American-born rabbi, I, I could, I mean, you know, because I have this sensitive ear, he, he spoke new age, the term spirituality was recurring all the time. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for your speech. I fully share uh, your view that uh, really these categories, spiritual, uh, religious, and secular, are not uh, universal, but uh, have a limited historical period of use, like 300 years or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and, um, uh, however, these two categories, uh, they provide us with a system of coordinates, like uh, axis, of, uh, two opposites, religious or secular. Uh, w but when we c uh, move to, to the next step, uh, and we use the word uh, category of spiritual, the question is, what is the opposite to spiritual? Do you have any ideas about that? Thank you. Very, very, well, thank you. I, it's something that I thought about. And it's quite interesting that I don't think there is one. Well, I didn't notice one. Well, in, to a certain degree, religion. The only, the only thing the spiritual says, a spiritual person say, I am not, is I'm not religion. Yes. Right? The, the, Well, uh, well uh, saying I'm spiritual, not religious, is just uh, having uh, just one step, one foot at the old uh, land, mm -hmm. the old soil, uh, where we use religious and spiritual. But if we move further, as you are suggesting, mm -hmm. that in postmodern world, these categories, secular and religious, uh, well, are evading. Mm -hmm. So what is taking there? place as a system of coordinates, because we do, one word is not enough, okay. spiritual. Well, you see what I mean? So first of all, I think it is significant, because I think the religion and secular, what, what is compelling about them as, as, uh, as concept is exactly that the dichotomy. The dichotomy, the, the division between. There's no religion without secularism, there's no secularism without, okay? So, so, okay, so, so from that point of view, the use of spirituality is not so much change it coming in place of secular or religion, but exactly in, in, instead of that dichotomy. This is what they're, they're erasing. From, the, from that point of view, I think, I think maybe they don't need another term. Okay, they don't want to use it as a binary term, but as they will have, of course, they will have the unspiritual, the non-spiritual. What is exactly the non-spiritual uh, is a question that I think, I think more research uh, should be done, which, which requires, I think, two things. First of all, to take it seriously and to recognize it as a very significant uh, 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 um, uh, culture phenomena. I don't know about funding of researchers, but I don't know, well, I think you can, can get some funding for research of yoga institutes, but it's, I think it's still uh, it's considered less important in other areas of research. So one thing is recognizing spirituality and new age as one of the major uh, uh, um, cultural phenomena of contemporary time. And I think the other thing is really for us as scholars not to, not to be so much ingrained in the area of, in, in the terms religion and secular. Because I think to study spirituality it's not enough to use methods and ideas and theories from religious studies. You have exactly to, to overcome this dichotomy between religion and secular, or religion, religious studies and political studies, for instance, yes, and, so, and, 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 and have a look at, at, this, new, at, at this new cultural uh, category.
Thank you very much for your very insightful talk. Uh, I'd like to ask about um, the newness of this phenomenon, in that you uh, insist that it's part of the postmodern moment. On the other hand, uh, wasn't roman hasn't romanticism been uh, described as uh, spilled religion? And uh, wasn't there a book uh, by Colin Campbell describing uh, romantic ethic, connecting it to the uh, spirit of consumerism? Uh, from this comes my real question. If spirituality is neither religion nor secularism, but something in between, would it be best, you think, to describe it in aesthetic terms? Uh, okay, so, so, so for, for the first question, yes, of course, I think, uh, you know, like any other concept, it, it didn't come, it wasn't created ex nihilo. And the sources can be found in romanticism, in early users, there is a continuation. There are some, as I suggested also already in the, the, in the I, I don't think we'll find in the romantic period a similar uh, a use of the term spirituality, but, but some of the roots of, of contemporary practices can be, fa can be found them, and even much more so in the late 19th and early 20th century, for instance, in the theosophical movement uh, uh, that can be seen as, you know, as the mother uh, uh, of, 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 of new age, and actually I think there are uses of the term spirituality. I brought one slide from the late 19th century, Felix Adler, who uses is not exactly the same, it's still connected to religion, but it it's comes closer to the, uh, to the uh, practices used today. And again, I think some theosophists will meditate and will not say that it's exactly, I don't know if they will use the, at the time the term spiritual, but possibly they would. So, so there is a history. And exactly like most, from that point of view, I see it as, as equivalent to postmodernity. Postmodernity is not something completely new. It emerges from modernity, it continues, but it reshapes. There's a new reshaping uh, uh, of culture uh, uh, and, and a change of basic, uh, uh, what I would call key categories. So from that point of view, I, I, I definitely think that there is a history and an interesting history to learn. It didn't just appear out of nothing but be became so prominent in the late 20th, 20th century. The question of aesthetics, I'm not sure about the suggestion, but you know, you know, I'd love to hear more about it. I, I don't, uh, I'm not sure that I understand uh, exactly to what direction you, you suggest, but definitely I'm open to any new way of studying this, uh, this phenomenon. Uh, Boris Falik of uh, Russian State University uh, for the Humanities. Well, uh, New Age is becoming, you know, in, in the capitalist culture, New Age is becoming a kind of a commodity, kind of a brand, and the New Ages themselves are very well aware of it. And uh, they're becoming sort of critical of the term New Age. And when you talk to them, uh, you usually say, oh, New Age, New Age. It's a kind of pejorative term. And, uh, but when I ask them, uh, but could you offer something instead of this term? They said, unfortunately, no. <laughs> so uh, my question is, does it happen to, mm, to the term spirituality? Because you know, in Russian language, uh, sometimes spirituality becomes a kind of a pejorative term, you know, and uh, there is even such uh, a neologism uh, duhovka, which in English means oven, oven, you know, in the stove, oven. So I think it's funny. But um, again, uh, does uh, something of the kind happen to the term spirituality? You know, that it's becoming a kind of an oven. And uh, do they try to find something, you know, in, uh, instead of spirituality, some other term, which is not a brand, which is not a commodity, or like New Ages in general, they say that no, unfortunately, we don't have anything to offer. Yes, of course, you're right about the New Age, and in a way, I think it's, uh, it's the, the change is very rapid, I think, because a few years, I, I think I use less the term now because I'm aware that it's less popular I've been in a class of students, I said something about new age, and they asked me what it's, what's, the new age, what's a new age, and 10 years, of course, it was a very common term. From my observation, most 
people that I would call new ages, they will, they will, I don't know, once you ask them to define themselves, you know, it's a problem. You can't ask a new ager to, you can't ask a, a contemporary person, I think, to define himself. That's a problem of, of course, I'm beyond definitions and, and don't try to define me. That's doing something bad. Uh, uh, spirituality cannot be defined. By the way, I think many people who will define themselves as spiritual, you'll ask them what spirituality, they will say quite proudly, listen, this is beyond definition. It's not something that's easy to define. I know what it is, but it's not something to define. I, my sense is, I use the term more contemporary spirituality or contemporary spiritual culture instead of new age. I think that's more accurate. Um, the point about the different usage in different languages, I think that's, that's the next interesting step. At least in Israeli culture, the, the term has different, uh, uh, similar, it's very much in influenced by the English use, but there's also quite uh, uh, special uh, uh, usages of the term that come from, of course, Jewish and Israeli uh, history, and I'm sure that's true about the Hovnos, as you, as you just observed. Um, will there be a new term? Will they? Of course, I think we, we're not. We're here to observe what's going on and to be aware that in five years' time, you know, maybe things will change and what we thought was very central will become peripheral. And I think that, you know, as an older scholar, I think I, you know, I encountered that, that I thought of so one, one thing as a, wow, that's going to be now the most prominent and that's very interesting. And then five years later, you find that something that was quite marginal and you didn't notice, that became, a, that became a, you know, a trend or a key concept. Or, so that's our life, but uh, yeah, I think that makes it interesting. And, um, so, uh, sorry, uh, we don't have much time, but I'm probably using my position. <laughs> yeah. Probably not a question, but some kind of um, thinking. You know, I would uh, like to continue a little bit this idea about aesthetical point of view. You know, if we could look um, at this, at least Western uh, European uh, development, um, the cultural terms. So starting from the end of the 18th centuries, at the end of the 19th centuries, this is always the waves of mysticism appearing, you know, uh, somehow that's the feeling of this tremendous change, social changes. Uh, could we ha have a look at this, uh, the birth of new age and spirituality in the same way? Uh, it's not something radically new, but part of these um, stages of development of the, um, uh, of the European culture in this, I would say, uh, secular or semi-secular world. Uh, on the other hand, I would say the, the concepts uh, usually appear much earlier than the practices. So speaking about the secular life, secular world, we understand that in some countries in the Western Europe, real secular culture started in the 1960s. Before that, I would say religious domain was absolutely almost total. And in the Soviet Union, that's the first steps of the secular culture started only after the collapse of the Soviet Union because the Soviet propaganda was really, uh, I was a pseudo-religious thing in a way. So uh, how could we combine? So the secular culture is very young. Could we look at this kind of spirituality as part of the development of this young culture, but not, you know, something else besides religious and secular? complicated, and I, I think there's a lot to think here. And I, again, especially for what some of you observed, there's change and continuity. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, this is, this is a new moment in development of, of culture, of globalized culture under the hegemony of Western culture, I guess. So that, that would be my way of looking at it. I, I try not to find secular culture and religious culture as something that really exists. Okay, I use them as, as, as terms that were used. Of course, if uh, uh, they do create reality once a person call himself secular or, or, or really uh, um, uh, um, create an, an, an institute that will be defined as secular. And you are quite right. Uh, um, this, is, this, is, this is a recent phenomenon. Uh, actually, I don't know about the term, what term is used in, uh, in Russian, uh, the term secular in English is much later used in the sense we're using it today, 
the Hebrew, in Hebrew, it's a really modern word that was uh, started to be used only 40 years, and this is in a culture that does define itself today to, to, as secular. The term itself wasn't used before 40 years ago, wasn't used at all. So I think these are ex uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, questions to examine. Uh, uh, again, what, what I can say, I think that we should try to avoid using the term secular and religious as our analytic terms and see how they are used. So because of that, definitely, definitely I think we should analyze new age, contemporary spirituality on the, on the historical context. You know, I'm a historian. That's, I, I, I think, what, what, what I'm interested in doing. Uh, uh, but I don't think I, I have a problem in defining it as developments in, in secular culture because this culture did not call itself secular. Okay, and, 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 and also the new development doesn't call itself secular. So I'm, I'm much more, I think we should be more sensitive to the way people define themselves. Of course, not accept their definitions and use them as analytic terms, but not do the opposite and say they're not doing, they're, they're, we shouldn't, we, 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 we shouldn't uh, consider at all what they are saying about themselves. When a person says, tell me I'm spiritual, not religious, going and telling him, Yes, you are religious. Of course, you are religious. It's just a new kind of religiosity. I'm getting, I, I think I'm doing something as a, as a critical scholar. I, I, I'm doing something problematic. <laughs>